welcome to Bass Street Blues. Today we're going to look at 80s Clapton, that kind of um, controversial period where he went from being this monstrous, authentic blues guitarist to a really great pop artist, in my opinion. If you listen to Journeyman, yes, there was some blues stuff on there, but a lot of those songs are pop songs. And in August in particular, they were very poppy for Eric Clapton. And when you compare it to earlier albums, especially the Layla and other assorted love songs album he did with Derek and the Dominoes, I mean, that's just a blues masterclass. But this period of time in the sort of late 80s, um, he was just writing these fantastic pop songs. Um, and I think a big contributor to that, especially with the album August, was Phil Collins, because Phil Collins in the 80s couldn't put a foot out of place. I mean, every album he did in the 80s just, just sold like stupid quantities, like millions and millions. And that Phil Collins poppy sound really shows in a, on the album August, because obviously it was Phil that produced it and played drums on it. Uh, and the basis for what I'm going to show you today, phrasing wise, is the um, is the Montreux Jazz Festival gig in in '86. So, as well as Phil Collins on drums, there was Greg Phelan Gaines on keys, uh, a regular um, man of the roster of Eric Clapton, and Nathan East, also a regular man for the roster of Eric Clapton. So, the first thing we're going to look at is is really a bend. And, and how Eric would elaborate on a bend. So, if we take the 14th fret of the B string, the C sharp, and bend up a tone. Now, Eric will do that in a variety of ways. One of the ways he'll do it, which is what I did in the performance before this, was a really... Really slow bend. You, you you could almost hear like the struggle and the strain of any man when he. Now, another way that he would do that is obviously just a straight bend up with the vibrato at the top. Now, that could be anybody, but this is where we get into it can only be Clapton. So. Uh, Take the slow bend I've just shown you, but then take the S sharp on the E string as well. So the 14th and the 14th of the B and the E, the fourth. And from that fourth, we've got to bend up to a minor third. So as opposed to playing the 14th on the B, imagine you're playing the 16th on the B. And that gives you the sound of a minor third interval. So we're going to drone or sustain, however you want to look at it, the 14th fret of the E string, whilst bending the 14th fret of the B string to the 16th fret of the B string, like so. With the vibrato at the top. Now, um, some ways he'd finish that is to come down, so release the bend, like so. So we've got a full bend on the 14th of the B, and then we're going to release the bend back to the 14th of the B, back down, and then play the 12th on the B. Now, um, going back to the album August, there's like a hidden gem song on there for me called Grand Illusion, and it's basically a Phil Collins song with Eric singing. Uh, the, the drumming is outstanding. As as well, what else would you expect from Phil Collins? And uh, the the main solo as I say, as, as I've shown you, so slow bend and then releasing. 
Um, and then obviously we can make the, f the minor third bend out of that. So the 12th fret of the B, 11th fret of the G, and then bend up. The next thing that we could do to sound like Clapton, if we so wished, is to hammer on a tone. So, so we've got the ninth fret of the G string here. And we're going to hammer on to the 11th fret of the G string. But we're going to hammer on like a rat up a drain pipe. A bat out of hell. Um, I could think of some others, but uh, don't want to get demonetized before we even started being monetized, do we? So you're really digging in, and and the hammer on's almost instantaneous. It, it, so uh, just to try and put that into some phrasing context for you, is how you'd use it. Again, clearly caricature in it, but making the point nonetheless. Which, taking the same uh, approach, we're then going to come on to Eric's legato, his trill. Uh, it's also worth pointing out here that I've just got this inherent um, hybrid picking that I do. So if you see me using pick and fingers, that's why it, it, at this point it's just part of what I do. It, very difficult to specifically use my pick as opposed to my pick and fingers. Um, we've all got different picking techniques, different ways of approaching how we pick. So you've got to find what works for you, um, assuming you know. If not, keep digging, it will come. So, uh, the trill. Hammer on from the ninth to the 11 on the G. And then release back to the uh, ninth fret of the G. And then we're going to go to the 11th fret of the D string. And then back to the 9th fret of the G string. Again, fingering as well. I personally find... Well, I switched between the two. Um, terrible person to ask, really. So, if we, um, again, try and apply some, um, some context to that... Kind of gets you in that Eric Clapton realm. Now, regarding Eric's tone for that period, he was using Soldano amplifiers. So what I've got going on here is a obviously the Helix, but a Mesa Boogie Lone Star. So <coughs> what I can do with this is say I just want like a generic clean sound to for my function gig. Split the coils. However, if I want like balls to the walls, instantaneous uh, rock, more gain, I will then just simply uh, use the full humbucker. So, just in this example, I split the coil to give me that single coil esque sound that Eric has. So, um, yeah. Now, regarding the delays, I'm not sure what delays Eric used. I'll be perfectly frank, um, Eric's tone isn't something that I've like massively investigated, uh, despite being a lifelong fan. Um, you can kind of tell what it is just by listening to it, in, in my opinion. So, if we um, take the delays I've got going on, I always have two delays on uh, for an um, from an ambient standpoint. So, in this case, I've got a quarter note and an eighth note that's dotted. Um, work that out in the sense of what works for you. For me, this. That works for me. Um, it's also worth noting as well that this isn't some special patch I've created specifically for the reasons of Eric Clapton. Uh, this is my patch that I use on gigs. It's very versatile. Um, 
then we come to really what the bread and butter is this 80s sound is this chorus effect so uh, just to play that line again <laughs> Um, almost pads the sound out and makes it more like a fluffy pillow than um, than a hammer and a nail kind of thing. And then if we put the tube screamer on, that's really going to give us the, uh, you know, the secret source or special source. It's not really a secret. Everybody knows that everybody in the 80s was using choruses. Eric was using the Bradshaw rig at the time, I believe. So, uh, yeah, this is with the chorus on. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that is in essence how I try and achieve an Eric Clapton-ish type of tone. It's also the, the tone I use when I'm trying to sound like Steve Lukather or Mike Landau. It's really just a generic 80s, um, 80s tone. Obviously, if I had a Stratocaster with single coil pickups, I'd be more on the money. Um, so yeah, if you got this far, thank you for, thank you for being here. Uh, like, share and subscribe and all that goodness. Uh, that is a, I hope a quick lesson in how to sound like Eric Clapton without overcomplicating it.